Hi there, this is Kevin with MDNASolutions.com. So recently I was working on a project that required remediation, but it required to use remediation within advanced actions. So let me just explain a few of the things that I did, and hopefully it can help you in the future. If you're new to remediation, I'm not going to cover it in detail. There are plenty of great videos and tutorials out there. I'm just going to go over the basics and then show you how to apply it in advanced actions. For this course, I've created this shell for the project. My second slide is my mission statement, and I've labeled it answer to question one, just so that I know where I need to go. Okay, some uh, filler text for now. Here is what I'm going to use. I'm going to use a simple next button. The next button is going to have an action of return to quiz. Captivate uses a built-in value or a built-in val uh, variable called CP quiz info attempts. The value, the initial value is at zero. When the user actually starts the quiz, Captivate detects this information and changes this value to 1. What this next button does with this particular action is that it says, if the quiz has started, let's go back to that quiz slide. If it has not started, it simply has a continue action, so we'll continue playing the project. That's important to know because you don't want to pause your project when you have a timeline that extends past the that extends past the length of the button so in this example if i were to play this project it would pause at the third second of the slide and upon clicking next if the quiz has not yet started then the user will have to wait the extra four seconds before moving on to the next slide so keep that in mind when working with uh, remediation and the return to quiz action once the user is actually in the quiz, then it's going to change the CP quiz info value to 1. If the user answers a question incorrectly, they're going to be returned to a predefined slide. In this particular case, it's going to take me back to slide number 2. If you can see here, my setup is number of attempts. I only have one attempt. If the user gets a question incorrectly, then they're going to jump to slide 2. They're they're going to be able to review the information, and upon clicking Next, now they'll go back and have an option to uh, revisit the, the question. I'm going to place this question down here so that you get a good idea of what I'm talking about. So it is now slide 10. Let's preview this project very quickly. We'll do a quick preview in browser. Here we go. So if you notice, number of attempts, remember that dollar sign, dollar sign CP info quiz, it is now represented as a value. Adding those dollar signs at the beginning and the end of a variable will show the value of the variable. All right, so here is my first slide mission statement. Here is number two, equities, and here is number three, core values. All right, after clicking next, I am now in the quiz the CP info value is going to change to 1. If I answer the question correctly, I'll simply move on to question number 2. In this case, I'm going to answer it incorrectly. I get my default incorrect message. And I am back to slide 2, which is my mission statement. Notice that number of attempts has now changed to 1, and it will remain as 1 for the remainder of the course. It doesn't matter how many times the user tries to do the quiz. This is not a counter that keeps on going up and down. If I hit next, now the action, now the condition is going to kick in. It's going to say, is it a value of 1? Yes, then return to the last visited slide, which is the question slide. Uh, if it were no, then it would just continue on to the next slide. So I'm going to hit my correct answer. And I get to move on to the following question, and so on and so forth. All right, now let's see how we can use this information for an advanced action. Okay, I'm going to hide my first three slides. I really don't need them. I only created them to show you the process. So here's a group that I had created, and this is what I'm actually going to use. I'm going to show these slides. Here's what happens. This is my hub. This particular code, this particular course allows the users free reign navigation. So I'm going to delete this. I'm going to get rid of this out here. I don't, I don't need it. 
So these are smart shapes used as buttons. Okay, each of these has different states, which is my normal state, my rollover state, and my completed state. By the way, you can also use your default visited state. Uh, that would have been acceptable as well. All right, so each of these three have the same thing. Now, I also created a variable for each of these options. Okay, same deal. If the option has been visited, it's going to change the variable value to one. The default value is zero. Uh, for this particular slide, when the slide is entered, on enter, we have an execute action, a verify completion. And what that does is it checks a couple of things. The very first thing I'm gonna do is hide the callout, this particular callout over here, okay? And I'll explain why in a second. The next thing I want to do is hide the play bar. This is a branching scenario, so I don't want to have the users be able to navigate back and forth. It's going to break the consistency of the branching scenario. I'm going to delay my next action by 10 seconds. And after 10 seconds, I'm going to show this instruction callout again. So what's happening here is when the user lands on this hub, if they don't do anything, let's say they're lost, they don't know what to do, then this callout appears. Okay, but when they come and revisit that slide again, I don't want them to see that instruction again, unless another 10 seconds go by and they don't click on any of the options. So this is what it does. First, it hides it, it hides my play bar, it waits 10 seconds, and then it actually shows those instructions again. Then I have conditional actions. The first one is verified mission, and I wanna see if the mission has been viewed and completed. If V underscore mission completed is equal to one, then I'm gonna change the state of button, button underscore BTN underscore mission to completed, okay? Nothing for the else. And the same thing applies to the other two options. One more conditional action, and it verifies to see if all three have been checked and completed. If all of these, um, if all of these sections have been visited and their values are equal to one, then we're gonna wait just a couple of seconds and then we're gonna to jump to slide nine to start the quiz. Nothing for the else statement. All right, so let's go to the question slides and we're gonna change the linkage. Because we hit the other three, the first three slides, slide two, three, and four, that actually uh, had the branching, the link has been broken. So now it has a default continue action. We're gonna change that to jump to slide. And in this case, same deal, mission statement for my first question. My second question is gonna jump to slide and we're gonna, we're gonna do the equities. And the last option is gonna go over the values. And that's it, we have our new linkage, all right? Now, let's go over the values really quickly. Actually, let's go over the mission statement where, is, where I'm gonna show you how to use the advanced action. Mission statement has a couple of jobs and each of these slides is configured similarly. They come in and they have different activities that they need to do, okay? For the mission statement, it's a very simple uh, script that they're going to read. When they click continue, the following will happen. I've created another advanced action called mission completed. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to verify if the quiz has already been started. It's very important that this is the first step you take. Does CP quiz info attempts equal one? If yes, let's go back to the quiz. If no, then let's change the mission completed to one and let's return to hub, okay? It's very simple, but it's very important. The very first thing I wanna do is see if the quiz has been attempted so I can send the user to the quiz. If the quiz has not been attempted, then I want to assign this as one because I've completed the mission statement area and I'm gonna go back to the hub. So remember, when I go back to the hub, the hub is going to verify if this is equal to one, if mission completed is equal to one, so it can change the state and add that green check mark. All right, that's it, that's all you have to do. Let's see how this works. Let's preview in HTML5. All 
Okay, here we go. Hit play. I am in my hub. Remember, I have an action to hide the play bar. I don't want to see the play bar. And after 10 seconds, my call out is going to pop up, but I moved it off of the stage. So it's no longer within the project. Or it's no longer visible. I want to start with my mission statement. I'm going to click on mission statement. And I am now. Okay, I can read the mission statement and I'm going to hit continue. This is where that script is going to come into play. Because this is the first time that we're accessing this slide and we have not visited the quiz, then it's going to change the mission statement variable to one and it's going to send me back to my hub. Now that I'm in my hub, I get my check mark. Same deal for equities and core values. Perfect. It's going to wait two seconds and it's going to take me to the quiz have another call out here. I, by the way, I had a character here, but it, it belonged to the, um, to the company that we were working with. So I had to remove all their assets. Hit continue. And here we go. Here's my first question about the mission statement. I'm going to answer it incorrectly. Default incorrect message. And I'm back to my mission statement. Okay. Now remember the very first thing in this particular advanced action is, Hey, this CP info quiz or CP quiz info attempts equal one, then go back to the quiz. And here I am. And I can continue through this cycle until I get the answer correctly. And that's it. If you like this tutorial, please give us a like. Hopefully it will make your e-learning life easier. And if you need us for anything, we're here to help. Thank you and good day.